When you begin programming, almost every new problem that we solve will teach you either a new concept, a new data structure, or a new algorithmic paradigm. One such problem is available on lead code contained duplicates that comes under the easy category. And it is a very good starter problem to help you understand about the hash fed data structure. Let us see what all of this is about. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I'm going to explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will see the most conventional way to approach this problem and see why that is not a feasible approach. Going forward, I will tell you about the hash fed data structure and we will see how this problem becomes so easy once you understand it. Going forward, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this actually works. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let us quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In the problem, you are given an array of integers and you have to return true if the array has any duplicates. So if any number is duplicated, just return a true. If you cannot find any duplicate number, then you have to return a false. Let us look at some sample test cases to make sure that we understood it correctly. In our test case number one, what do you see? You have this array and you can see that the number one is a duplicate, right? So for test case number one, you need to answer true because you were able to find a duplicate, right? And when you look at test case number two, you see that none of the elements are duplicated, right? Each element is unique. So for test case number two, you need to output false as your answer. So this is how you can evaluate both the test cases. Now, how do you go about solving it? If you start to think about the problem, the first approach is very naive. What you can do? You can start with each element in the array and then try to see if you can find a duplicate. So you compare one with two, they are different. Then you compare one with three, it's different. And then you compare with one with one again, you find a duplicate. So you will simply return true, right? because you did find a duplicate. But this approach will fail when your array is very large. For example, I changed this array to, now the size of your array has increased, right? So how do you go about comparing to find, does this array have duplicates or not? You start with the first element, right? And then you will see, can you find a one again? You traverse through the entire array and you do not find a one anywhere, right? Next, what will you do? you will start with the second element. Once again, you will try to compare if you can find a two anywhere else. You found a two, right? So, okay, this array has duplicate and you can return a false. But what happens? Let us say this last two was not prevent. Then what will you do? You will compare every element with two. Then you will compare every element with three. Then you will compare every element with four, then five and then six and then seven, right? So you are taking up a lot of time in this process. And that is not something that we want. We want to speed up our process, right? And that is what will make a good code, correct? So what can we do about it? First of all, try to understand where are you facing a problem? You are facing a problem because you have to compare every element in your array, right? And to solve this problem, we have a special data structure that is known as a hash fit. Now, what is a hash fit? A hash fit is a special data structure that will never have any duplicate values. So what happens is this kind of a data structure can store any kind of values. You can have a string hash fit that will have all the strings. You can have an integer hash fit that will have all integers. But the condition is that this set will never have any duplicates. So for example, if I add 10 in my hash set, then I add 20. And let us say I try to add a 10 again, then you will not be able to add a 10 because 10 is already present. So your hash set will still have just two elements. It will not have the third element 10 that I'm trying to add. So now using this property, we can easily solve our problem. What we do is we take up our array and we will try to insert each element in this hash fit. So what happens is we take the first element and I add it to my hash fit. 
I get a 1. Then I get the second element and I will add it to my hash fit. It does not exist in the hash fit, so I will get a 2. Then I try to add a 3. You can add a 3. Then you add a 4. You can add a 4 also. Then comes the interesting part. You get a 3 again, right? So how do you know that you have already seen it first? What you do is you try to add this 3 to your hash fit. Now this data structure already has the element 3 in this, right? So you will not be able to add one more 3. And this will return a false. And that is how you know that a 3 already exists and that is a duplicate. As soon as you find a duplicate, you can simply return true, right? Because that is what the problem asks, correct? And if you traverse the entire array and no duplicates are found, you can simply return a false. So this way you can approach this problem efficiently, correct? If you're wondering more about hash fit, a hash fit is a utility function. Now in most of the modern programming languages like C++ or Java or Python, this hash fit is available as a standard library and you are able to use it directly. You can also implement your own hash fit in the C language, but that is a little tricky. And to be very honest, no interviewer is gonna ask you like how can you implement your own hash fit. So whenever you see problems around duplicates, always try to use the hash fit data structure because in a hash fit, you can never have duplicates. Now, if you have understood all of this, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how this is actually working in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have the same sample array with me that is passed in as an input parameter to the function contains duplicate. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Proceeding ahead with our dry run, what do we do next? First of all, we create a hash fit to store all the integers. So you can see, I have created an empty hash fit that will store all of my integers as and when I read them. Going forward, what is the next thing that we do? We run a for loop and iterate over each element in the array. So in this for loop, we will go through every element one by one. And what do we do with it? We take the element and check if this number is already present in the hash fit. If yes, this function will return a true and it simply means that we found a duplicate. Otherwise, what we do is we could not find the number and we add it to the hash fit. So when I see the number one, this number is not present in the hash fit and it will get added. So when my for loop runs for the first time, I will add one to my hash fit. In the next iteration, I will get two. So two will be added to the hash fit, then three and then four. When I reach three again, I will encounter this condition, check the number in the hash fit. This number is already present. That means it is a duplicate. So we can simply return true as our answer. And this is how your code will execute. Now, the time complexity of this solution is order of n. That is because we are iterating through the array only once. And the space complexity of this solution is also order of n. That is because if the array has all distinct elements, then you will need order of n space to store all of those elements in a hash fit. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that I know learning programming could be a little bit tricky in the beginning. When you just start to write code, there are a lot of things that you don't know about. For example, when you approach this problem and you do not have any knowledge about the hash fit data structure, then you would be just confused, okay, what do I even do to get a feasible solution? So in situations like these, try to search around a little bit and try to focus on the problem. Your area of concern was that you have to traverse the entire array again and again, right? So try to find a solution around that problem itself. How can you optimize your searches? That is where the concept of a hash fed data structure comes in. Try Googling around a little bit, try to read a little more, and certainly you can arrive at the solution on your own next time. So never shy away from the problem. Just be patient, try to figure out a solution, and certainly you will learn something new. Who knows, this new concept can help you to solve even more problems, right? 
So what other problems did you see which involved the use of a hash fed data structure? Were there any problems in the past that you just skipped because you didn't know about the structure? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. Also tell me if you are facing any problem understanding this data structure. What else can I do to explain it to you better? You would be also glad to know that a text explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com. You can find the link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Until then, see ya!